you've been vocal about your support of Black Lives Matter over the past few years, even when it wasn't the cool thing to do. And, and this week, more than ever, there is so much going on about them and around them, smear campaigns and assumptions of what they are and disinformation on the internet. What is it that drew you to that organization specifically? What drew me was the idea that Black Lives Matter. I grew up in the idea that when I watch TV, when I look at the world, that black lives don't matter. And I hear somebody saying that I matter. And I think people are offended by the concept of somebody saying that a particular people matter. See, what happens with privilege is that as soon as somebody says that they have privilege, that makes another person want to acknowledge that your privilege isn't over my privilege, but the privilege to live is the privilege of every single human being. And I think that that shouldn't affect anybody else's thought process for saying that black lives matter, that women lives matter. They do. At this point, we're dealing with the issue that our black brethren around the world, lives have been lost on a daily and we watch it every single day. And so that was a draw drew me to the situation, but it also drew me is that this is an opportunity for us as people to use our platform to talk about the humanity of another person and the humanity of what connects each person, the interconnection between us. At the end of the day, everybody's blood is red. And the most important commodity on the planet is the human being. As much as we don't want to agree that we want to talk about black culture and love black culture, but the commodity of the black man or the black woman, the black child, the black school, the black existence, is important because they're human beings. And I think we have overlooking the fact that human beings exist. And I think because if you look at the historical context, an uh, African-American person was never a full human being. They never had the right to a full human being. We had to go to court. We had to go to court, literally had to go to court and get a judgment by the Supreme Court to say that we are full human beings. And that is amazing, but that's the history of the country. And I think a lot of white people have failed to forgive, have forgotten the story of the other people around us. And I think Black Lives Matter reminds us that there is a story. There is a story belong before Martin Luther King. There's a story of slavery. And what has that done to our society? We're looking at the grandchildren of those slaves. We're looking at the grandchildren of pain. We're looking at the grandchildren of so many things that have happened to their forefathers that this is the only way that they feel is to bring the light into the history of what has happened and the traumatic situations of being African-American in America. And you've participated in peaceful protests in the past, taking a knee during the anthem or stay, staying seated or waiting in the locker room, uh, kind of following early leads from, from Colin Kaepernick. You were endlessly criticized for doing that. And now we see non-peaceful protests in the streets, and now that is problematic as well. Does this give Black people a mixed message? What, how can you actually protest? The problem is that we're protesting the system, and whatever we protest and how we do it is constantly going to affect the people who think they know right. But the people who think they know right, they never do right. They think there's this way to protest, this this way. What is the what is the way to protest when you want to live? When you want to live and you're drowning, you're fighting to survive out that water. When you're running, when you're in war, somebody's shooting, you're running as fast as you can, you're trying to survive. What is the right way to survive? I don't know what the right way to survive is. All I know is there's many people trying to survive and there isn't a guidance, but the people who have all the answers on how to protest aren't the people telling us how to survive. They aren't making the rules that people feel like they could survive. They're only sitting in the room and saying, well, this isn't the way I would do it. This is how I wouldn't do it. But at the end of the day, it is about surviving and living and creating a future for their kids and our kids. And like I said, peaceful protests, whatever type of protest, but at some point, their voice has got to be heard. It's on the government of the United States to stand up and speak for its people. But if those people don't have value, then what's the question? If ever white men were going, white men were getting drugged out their car, shot in the head, and pulled out and didn't have the rules, guess what would happen? Do you know? Boston Tea Party would happen. Right. The American Revolution would happen. These are the things that have happened to white people, and they fought for their independence with the, against the monarchy of the British they wanted to be free. They wanted to create a new country. The idea of America, the idea, the ideology of what America is supposed to be, it sounds so great. It sounds so dignified. 
But the actuality, the people within that system that are supposed to be upholding that idea have been spiritually bankrupt and morally corrupt that they can't even see what it means to where people are fighting for the same thing that they were fighting for, but they're only fighting for what was promised to them.